Welcome to example instruments for LFOs. As you might remember, LFOs is short for low frequency oscillators. Let's have a look at the um, instrument first. The schematic of an instrument you see here. And, um, and again, like this, the, the, the main component of each instrument with, for the internal tone engine is the oscillator that creates a sine wave or a square wave or another waveform sound. Um, and then it's controlled by the ADSR, the, the amplitude or the volume of that um, oscillator. And that's triggered by the note on and off. And then there are three other components. So there is the uh, low pass filter, which we are looking at in the next example. And then there's two low frequency oscillator, one that controls the amplitude and the other one that um, controls the frequency. So what they actually do is um, they are also oscillators like this one, um, but they do not create an audible signal, but the oscillating values are used to change the amplitude over time and the frequency over time. They're called low frequency oscillators because they oscillate at a lower frequency than the normal audible oscillators, um, usually um, in a frequency range of yeah, 20, 50 maximum hertz um, and, um, and below. So, so you, um, they are used to create effects like tremolo and, and vibrate, vibra vibrato and other similar effects. So let's have a look at the example. So here on the right, we see the, um, the example we are talking about. And here on the, on the left and on the right here, we have the, um, the like a, again, like almost like the similar, like a, a sketch similar to the very, very first um, example in the series. So this one basically just plays a note when we press the mouse. And um, starting from here, um, we add now the oscillators. If you remember the schematics, the first thing we need to do, we really, we need to turn on the oscill the low frequency oscillator for the instrument. So um, we choose our current instrument. And since we're only using one, we can just do it like this, instrument dot. And now we um, need to enable, let me just peek here enable the let's start with a frequency lfo and we just by default it's turned off and now we turn it on so now we um our main frequency that we define each time we call the method node on is now manipulated also by the um, LFO, by this LFO. So um, I'm not exactly sure if we will hear something when we play this, so I won't. <laughs> um, but what I definitely want to do is I want to um, now change the um, the properties of that um, frequency oscillator. And as as uh, as in the the normal oscillator oscillator, we change the uh, we basically change two properties one is the amplitude that's the range in which it oscillates and the second one is the frequency that's the speed in which it oscillates so um let's start with the um with the amplitude of that it's a bit of a lengthy method call but here we now change the frequency um in which it oscillates. I'm just going to um, map this onto the um, the speed of the mouse. Um, maybe one one note. So there's no limit actually to the to the value range that we um, the 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 hertz range in which we oscillate our low frequency oscillator. So we can also have it oscillate at a really high pitch. Um, this term. <clears throat> like so many other terms are is basically also borrowed from the from the electronics predecessor to these um, all these concepts so um, we can oscillate it at 400 200 800 hertz so well within the audible frequency range but um, 
as I said, like historically, these oscillate at lower values, so maybe just go from zero hertz to or maybe one hertz to um, um, maybe we stick with something very low. So this this is like one tenth of a hertz um, to twenty hertz. Okay, so. Um, Frequency. Yeah, this is uh, this notation is a little bit confusing, but this first term means, you know, take the um, low frequency oscillator and then change its frequency. Okay, so now we have something that we can actually run, and maybe here. So we just play our. Okay, we hear nothing, and that obviously is because the um, I know what's the problem, and the problem is that we also need to change the amplitude to a different um, value because the um, the um, if we just define the speed, it will um, oscillate at maybe ten hertz or something. It will oscillate um, between I think the default is really zero and minus one and one so it's it's like it's like two hertz um oscillation amplitude and that is not audible there was an oscillation i assume but um it really wasn't um it really wasn't audible so um so the um so let me just peek what kind of amplitude range we used here so that was actually from zero to 50 so you also just copy that um so here we also now and change this this uh, the amplitude between zero and fifty. So this basically means it's uh, if we move it all the way to the uh, to the bottom, yeah, the the mouse. So so that this value will be returned. Um, we have uh, an amplitude of fifty. So that means that the it oscillates between fifty plus fifty and minus fifty. So so this will now create like a frequency change. Of um, of um, of one hundred hertz on our original signal, and that should be well audible. So let's see. And if we move to the top, then the the range in which the where am I here? The range in which the um you know change of the frequency over time through the LFO occurs is really really small. And the further we go to the bottom. Bigger the, the difference is here it's 50, 50 um, units, so 100 hertz, and you can already hear how it's how it's um, how it's really affecting the, the 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 sound quite a lot. So it becomes like this um, vibrato sound. Um, and if we move to the left, we hear that the speed in which the oscillation occurs. Very slow, and then the further we go to the right, the quicker it offsets or manipulates the actual the normal frequency defined by node on. And so this is what the LFO of the um, of the the frequency LFO does. And um, I'm just gonna comment this out. And and now we do the same thing for the um, for the other LFO. So, as I said, we had uh, the first LFO we we changed was the um, was the, um, the the LFO that's connected to the frequency of the of our oscillator, and now. Um, we want to look at the one that is actually manipulating the um, the amplitude of our oscillator. So the amplitude LFO. It itself, since it's also an oscillator, also has the same two values that we can manipulate, its own amplitude and its own um, um, frequency in which it does. I'm just going to copy um, these values from our example. I'm a little bit lazy here because Not because um, what it does is actually we are now 
um, mapping our y-axis again to the amplitude. So the, the value difference between it will oscillate. So we're mapping this to also a value between zero and one. Um, we don't need to have such a uh, um, huge range like we had in the frequency um, LFO because um, this one is manipulating the amplitude and the amplitude in the in our main oscillator is also really just from zero to one. So, um, so it's enough if we map the value range of the mouse to also zero to one. The frequency, um, we pick it a similar one, actually a little bit faster. I took 20 here. Um, now this goes up to 50 Hertz um, in which we can manipulate the... And here I also need to change the... Um, the well, also need to enable the amplitude LFO um, similar to the frequency LFO we enabled in the other example. And now we run the sketch and we, you, you will hear something kind of similar, but not exactly the same. So if we have like a very strong amplitude oscillation, like a very high difference in up and down, yeah, here it's, it's much smaller, it's barely audible. Here it becomes more audible and then it goes So this is like one now. So the, it goes from plus one to minus one, the effect of, of the LFO. If we move to the left, it gets slower also. And if we move to the right, it, it gets the oscillation gets faster. And it at some point, it's actually interesting because I, I chose uh, to map the frequency from zero to 50 hertz. And um, somewhere around 20, 30 hertz, um, you know, we enter the audible range, the audible frequency range, the lower end um, of it. And um, you can hear that somehow it starts to create something like its own tone in a way. You know, like you start to hear like a second frequency that's, that's uh, emerging from the um, low frequency amplitude oscillator. But even if you just if you just use a fixed parameter set like like here for example you can hear if you just play the note it has a very specific characteristic different to no frequency oscillation so this is like low low frequency oscillator acting on the amplitude and here it's we could now combine the two um, but I personally find it very, um, very hard to, to uh, you know, like to understand, acoustically understand what I'm hearing. So we are now changing the, um, the frequency and amplitude of both LFOs at the same time. They're both acting on our uh, main oscillator. Um, so that um, become, can become easily quite chaotic. Also, like we we are not really caring about like if these if, if these frequencies, the two frequencies of the oscillator, the low frequency oscillator, if they align at at at, um, at in any way. So I think they we could do this as a demonstration, but um, but I find um, that it is easier to understand if you manipulate them um, independent of each other. That's why I'm not going to program this now, but um, that's why I added a little bit of yeah interface basically uh, in this example and if we run it um you can see there's like a and there's like a tiny little bit of interface so we can still press a button um but here we can switch between the um frequency low frequency the frequency low frequency oscillator and the amplitude low frequency oscillator um and then if the if this is a small dot it's disabled and if we press one then we enable it and the mouse changes its parameters again And then I enable the um, amplitude of frequency oscillator also, and now I change its value. So 
very sci-fi ish sound here. <laughs> okay. I think this is really best understood by playing around with these values. Um, so if I turn them both off again and we're back to a straight sound. Um, um, so um, I really encourage you to, to um, understand this better by um, trying this out, by playing around with this. Okay, that's it for this demonstration of the low frequency oscillators in instruments. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but um, also note that um, this functionality is really only available in the internal um, sound or tone engine. Um, it's not available for MIDI uh, or OSC as such because, um, yeah, that it's it's just a different protocol in a way. Um, so this really only works for the internal sound engine. Okay, see you in the next one.